Okay, so this is how you will be able to record Battlefield 4 with Mantle enabled uh, using OBS, and uh, this is so far what I believe to be the best method. Uh, so we're going to be using a feature called VCE, which is a, uh, a feature that was actually built into uh, all graphics, all AMD graphics cards uh, pat, uh, since late 2011. So that's the uh, rate that includes the Radeon HD 7900 and up. Um, and this feature has actually been around for quite some time, but uh, I guess they haven't really uh, used it to its full potential up until recently since they've developed uh, the Gaming Evolved app uh, with Raptor. So VCE is open source so anyone can use it including OBS which uh, they have created a special branch of their uh, really awesome free software uh, that will allow you to record uh, videos uh, in just about any video game uh, with very minimal uh, performance loss. We're talking three frames per second at most off of your uh, normal performance while not recording. So what you want to do is you're going to want to Google search uh, OBS VCE. And then the, uh, it should be the first thing that pops up. It's going to be on the OBS project forums. And when you click on that, it'll bring you to this page. I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, I should warn you that this is in beta, so it, it may be a little unstable. But from the most part, from what I've seen, this has been very stable. Um, you're going to want to download the binaries, which uh, apply to your operating system, either 32 or 64-bit. I downloaded 64-bit because I'm running 64-bit uh, Windows 8, but I could download 32-bit if I wanted to. Um, once you've downloaded those files, you're going to want to uh, go to that download, and you're going to want to unzip it. You're going to probably need a 7-zip because it's a .7z file, and inside you're going to find a bunch of files that you will be copying into uh, one, a new program folder in program files. So um, I created a new folder called OBSVC under program files. If you're using a 32-bit version, then you're going to want to put it into program files x86. Either one works. Uh, now, once you've copied them into this file, uh, and by the way, I should point out that these are two separate versions of OBS. So this is the main version and this is the one that includes VCE. All you have to do is start up OBS VCE and uh, you'll see this nice window here that looks very familiar if you've used OBS before. And you're gonna see, you're gonna go into settings now. Um, general settings, you don't need to worry about that. Encoding, this is the important part right here. Uh, if you get to this part right here and you get an error message saying that uh, you're missing some sort of DLL file, you're going to have to download that DLL file from uh, the from the page, uh, the link that they provide uh, on the forum. It's uh, the Microsoft v, uh, Visual C++ 2013 runtimes. Just download that. Um, you should, as they say, uh, match that version with the OBS bitness. So if you download a 32-bit, download 32-bit VC++ uh, runtimes. If you download 64-bit, then obviously download the 64-bit version of the Visual C++ runtimes. So uh, very simple. You just install it. It's, it takes two seconds. Um, then once you have that run, it, once you have that installed, open OBS back up. Go to your encoding and select AMD VCE, and uh, you're going to want to uh, enable C CBR constant bitrate, uh, enable CBR padding. I, I don't know what it is, but it works fine. So just keep it uh, near max bitrate. You're going to want it to be uh, somewhere between probably twenty thousand and forty thousand. Um, your bitrate will determine your file size as well as your quality. So the higher the bitrate, the higher the quality, but also the larger file size. Um, if you're planning on streaming, then you might want to lower it below 20,000. 
uh, depending on your internet speed. But uh, for the most part, you should be fine uh, with with 25,000. You're not going to see any performance decrease at all uh, because, uh, especially if you're using a fast uh, hard drive or SSD. Uh, optional VCE settings, I just left it as default. Um, if something's not working, try screwing around with that, I guess. Broadcast settings, I just you just choose your file path. Video, uh, you're going to want to set your base resolution to your native resolution, in my case 1920 by 1080p. Uh, don't do any resolution downscale, and you're going to want your, to set your frame, your frame rate to 60 FPS, although you can set it to 30 FPS if you want. I prefer 60, because it looks nicer. Um, but if you want to save on file size, then I suppose go with 60, go with 30 frames per second instead. Um, audio, don't screw with it unless you need it. Uh, advance, uh, nothing here strikes me as uh, a possible hindrance. If you're if you're having uh, trouble with uh, the CPU overloading or something like that, then you can change the x dot, the x two six four CPU preset to ultra fast. Um, it won't really change the video quality at all, and I don't think it will really affect it with VCE enabled, but you can experiment with that and see if that changes anything. Uh, I have it set on the default, which is very fast. Um, VCE encoder, I kept it as default parameters. If you want to change them, just select custom parameters. I honestly have no idea what the fuck it, what it does. Uh, so, if you, if you uh, how, if you know what these things mean, then you can try screwing with it. Uh, otherwise, just leave it alone. And then once you have that done, you're going to want to have a your source set to monitor capture if you're going to be recording in Mantle. If you're going to be recording in DirectX, you're going to want to be using a game capture instead. Uh, or alternatively, you can use multi monitor capture, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, for... but... For Mantle, you absolutely need monitor capture. You cannot use game capture because uh, the Mantle SDK has not been released yet. So, yeah. Um, come on. Come on, AMD. <laughs> so, once you have that all set up, you're going to want to click on uh, Battlefield 4. You're going to want to start running it. And uh, once it's loaded up, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you are running in borderless mode, not in windowed mode, not in full screen. Uh, you need to have it run in borderless mode if you're running in Mantle. If you're running uh, with, uh, if you're running it in DirectX 11, then you can feel free to use uh, full screen to your heart's content. But uh, if you're going to be running in Mantle, you need it in borderless mode. So now. Just to display uh, what the performance is like, and also we need perf overlay draw graph one, and uh, you should see that it is recording uh, Battlefield Four quite well uh, on. Fortunately, it looks like the game just ended, so you won't be able to see any gameplay footage, but uh, I can assure you that this does work. And uh, it should record at around 60 frames per second. Um, I was having trouble actually getting it to record in 60 frames per second, but you may have better luck than I do. Uh, if, you, if you figure out some settings that are different from the mine that, that pr produce better video quality, better frame rates, uh, just let me know, but it shouldn't have any performance hits whatsoever uh, on your gameplay, which is what's important. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, feel free to rate and subscribe.